Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is a small $74 computer with an ARM Cortex-A8 based processor. And you can see on the label it says Android 4.0 Mini PC, but it turns out that with this little micro SD card slot here, you can go ahead and install a different operating system and boot it. So I'm going to go ahead and show you what uh, Ubuntu Linux 10.04 looks like. This is a fairly early build. It's designed to run off the SD card, and it's actually designed for a different device with the same processor. So uh, there are a couple of interesting quirks, but for the most part, things seem to work. Um, so let's go ahead and plug it in and turn it on. So it's plugged in, the light goes on, and let's take a look up at the monitor. Now I have an HDMI cable plugged in to connect to a 1080p monitor, and I've got a wireless keyboard and mouse also plugged into the USB port. The uh, device has 4 gigabytes of RAM and 512 megabytes of memory. And you can see pretty quickly we get uh, sort of the basic Ubuntu look here. An on-screen keyboard also pops up so that you can enter um, your username and password even if you don't have a mouse and keyboard, which I do. Now this is a pre-compiled image that somebody else has created, so in this situation I need to log in as root and the password is Ubuntu and you can find instructions for installing this at lilliputing.com. Uh, it'll sort of walk you through the process of preparing the SD card and um, loading the Ubuntu operating system. Out of the box, uh, it's not even going to support wireless, but there's a very simple command that you can enter, hit restart, and then you've got wireless working. Um, now there are some quirks. I've noticed, for instance, that the shutdown button just doesn't work at all. The, the system locks, the keyboard and mouse stop working, but the device does not shut down, which is interesting because in Android there also doesn't seem to be any easy way to shut down this device other than simply unplugging it, um, which feels kind of like a strange way to go. Um, for some reason on my monitor here you can see that some items are not fitting on the screen, but if you know where they are you can sort of get your reset button and uh, lock screen and other settings, and from here we can access all of the options. So I've got wireless connected, although you don't feel like loading that. Let's go ahead and show a couple of different things that you can do in Ubuntu here. Now it's a relatively slow processor. It's an ARM-based processor. It's not a Intel or AMD x86 chip, so some things are not going to operate it quite as quickly as you might be used to on a more powerful system, but it does work. Um, you know, there's a chance that... there we go needed to wait for everything to load properly. So we've got a terminal that works, and once it's off and running you can see that it works nicely. I'm just going to load some lightweight applications here so we don't have to wait too long for them to work. So you can see at times it's a little bit less than responsive. Uh, it takes a little while to load some web pages, and sometimes it sort of freezes up for a second. But for the most part, it works a lot like a computer that you would have bought five, ten years ago. Um, it's got a, it doesn't have the fastest processor around, but it really is probably faster than a lot of computers that you're using in, say, the uh, early 90s or maybe even the late 90s. And it's capable of running a full desktop-style operating system. Uh, let's go ahead and open Open Office, which is probably going to take a little while, because it tends to be a pretty resource-intensive application.
And since this is Ubuntu 10.04, which is a couple of years old, um, you know, some of the packages aren't necessarily as up-to-date as they would otherwise be, but, uh, you know, we've got an earlier version of the Firefox operating, or Firefox web browser, we've got an earlier version of OpenOffice, and for the most part, they're still fully functional. Almost there. Now, as I mentioned, you can go into the uh, system menu here and use the restart button if you need to restart the system for some reason, but shutdown doesn't really seem to work properly. Uh, you should also be able to change users if you create a new user account. And we've got OpenOffice up and running. So, you know, some applications are going to be a little bit more painful to use than others because of the slow load times, but once it works... I guess like that... Seems to work fairly well. So, we've got OpenOffice running. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do something a little bit funny here. I'm going to go ahead and just pull the plug to turn it off pop out the SD card, and then we're going to plug it back in. And now, it should boot into Google Android. So you can see it's the same device, the only difference is that it's now booting from the internal storage, the 4 gigabytes of internal storage, instead of from the micro SD card. And instead of running Ubuntu, it's running Google Android, which is the operating system it was uh, shipped with. So it's a pretty capable little device. It can become a full Ubuntu Linux computer, can probably run other Linux-based operating systems, or it can run Google Android if uh, all you need are the, uh, the apps that you can run in an Android-based system. Uh, in both operating systems, you can use a keyboard and mouse or other peripherals. You can plug in a USB hub if the uh, one or two USB ports that are available are not good enough for you. There's one full-size and one mini USB port and one mini HDMI port. So, again, here you can see we're running Android 4.0 on the exact same device that a moment ago we were running Ubuntu 10.04. And I made the same mistake of uh, not waiting long enough for it to sort of boot before playing around with it. There we go. So everything's now working just fine. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and the Android 4.0 mini PC or MK802 uh, device showing sort of a dual boot setup.